name is Marion. I'm from the blog Miss Mustard Seed, and today I'm going to be painting this piece of furniture in Miss Mustard Seed's milk paint. Years and years ago, I made a video. This was even before I launched the paint line, I think, or right when I did. I made a video on applying the first coat of milk paint and what to expect and what that looks like, and that's been a very popular video on my channel, but it's so outdated. I was like sitting in my basement. Um, again, it was years ago. So I'm going to film an updated version of that. First of all, I know this dresser is so pretty. The graining is so pretty. It's not normally a piece that I would have bought to paint, but I was having trouble actually finding a dresser. I've moved. And so now I'm not in an area where there's just like tons and tons of old furniture to paint. This was offered up to me by one of my friends. So I apologize to those of you who love it as it is, um, but it's getting painted because that's why she gave it to me. So what I did to prepare this to paint is um, I did give it a sanding with an orbital sander with 60 grit sandpaper on it. And that was so I could really pull off that shiny polyurethane finish that was on it. If it does make you feel better, this piece did not have the original finish. It was refinished at some point, so I wasn't stripping off something that was original. Anyway, I sanded it all off to remove the gloss. And the reason I did that is because milk paint can sometimes chip off of and flake away from really shiny surfaces. So like really slick polyurethane finishes, um, it can sometimes just chip off of which I wouldn't mind this chipping some, but I don't want it to be chippy all over because I'm using this piece to introduce our new color aviary. So I want the color to be the feature, not a bunch of chippy texture. The other thing is if chipping does happen, I don't like shiny wood showing through. I feel like the point of having a piece chip and flake is so it can look authentically old, like it you know, was hauled out of a barn and it has maybe even the original paint on it, if not some very old paint on it. So that's the whole point of it. Since this is an old dresser, um, it very well could have been a piece that was left in an attic or a barn where it would be affected by heat and humidity and the paint might um, crackle or start to chip off. So that's kind of the idea with that. If you see this shiny, glossy polyurethane underneath the chipping, kind of gives it away. So. Um, with milk paint, I love to um, have people look at a piece and not really know if it's original paint or not. And oftentimes, um, when I sell pieces at antique fairs, I'm asked, is that original or not? And they really can't tell the difference in some cases between pieces I bought and painted and pieces I bought with an original or an old paint finish on them. So, um, do you always have to sand? No, you don't. Um, I like sanding a piece, and the reason why I do is because um, it gives me a chance to sort of get to know the piece. I really put my hands all over it. Um, I check to make sure everything is in good working order, that there's not any chipping, veneer, or anything that needs to be repaired or addressed before I start painting. I can also see, especially on the top, if there's any water rings or any kind of damage that's going to show through the paint, that again, I would want to address before I start to paint it. Um, it also just helps, no matter what paint you're using, it helps the paint to adhere better, and you're going to have a longer lasting, better looking finish if you sand first. Now I know sanding has a bad reputation because people just want to get straight to the painting, but this took me, and this was a very thorough sanding, I don't always sand this thoroughly, but this took me about 10 minutes for the whole dresser. And it's worth that 10 minutes to get to know the piece and to give your paint the best opportunity to adhere. So I've mixed up my milk paint with water and we have tons of videos on mixing milk paint, what you're looking for. I have lots of blog posts on that as well, so I'm not going into all the mixing. I've just mixed in a plastic cup with a little wooden stir stick that I got at the craft store. And I'm going to apply the paint with a synthetic bristle two inch angled sash. And these are my favorite kind of brushes for painting furniture. Just use a good brand. Like these are uh, my own brushes that I designed. We don't sell them anymore, but uh, maybe we will at some point. Um, but 
you can get this same, not with the handle necessarily, but you can get a two inch angled sash in a Wooster or a Purdy and those will do a really nice job for you. Quality brush does make a difference. And then I am just going to apply the paint. With milk paint, one of the things that's really nice about it is, first of all, it feels very thin, but then it just goes on beautifully. Like it's always kind of surprising how nice it goes on. And I've been working with milk paint for a long time and I'm still like, wow, this is a great paint finish. When I use latex or enamel to like paint my baseboards or my walls, I'm, I'm, I kind of miss milk paint and just how easy it is to work with. Um, because it's thin, it's very forgiving with brush strokes. So if you're kind of a sloppy painter, you are going to love um, what milk paint does for, you know, your sloppiness. <laughs> So just like this, I'm going to brush the paint all over. Now, could you use a roller? Yes, you could. Um, I tend to use a brush. Again, I just I like the, the, it's therapy for me to paint a piece with a brush. It's a little bit of an art for me. But you could use a roller if you want to. You just need to be aware of roller marks. Um, those do level out pretty well with milk paint. Also, can you spray milk paint? And again, the answer is yes. The only thing is, since milk paint is a powder that you mix with water, you want to make sure that you um, strain the paint really well. You have to do that with any paint, but especially with milk paint, you want to make sure that you strain it so that it doesn't clog up your sprayer. But yes, milk paint is a fantastic paint for sprayers, actually, because it is on the thinner side, and with um, some heavier paints, you have to thin them down quite a bit to get them to go through a sprayer well. So anyway, I'm going to keep painting this and then let you see how the first coat looks. So this is the first coat, and I will admit this first coat looks really, really good for a first coat. Usually, um, especially if you're painting a piece that already has paint on it or a finish, that first coat can look, um, well, it can look kind of ugly. We call it the ugly stage. Um, it's, a, it's the furniture's adolescence, and you have to give it a chance to grow up, you know? You need to put on the second coat of paint and complete it, put the finish on, distress it, do whatever you're gonna do before you judge. But this first coat looks really good. And the reason being is that the wood was almost sanded down to the bare wood. Um, this piece, as I said, it had a very shiny polyurethane finish, but that finish was very, very thin. So it sanded off very easily, as I said, in about 10 minutes. Um, so I was able to get this mostly down to the bare wood. And milk paint loves bare wood. If you have any unfinished wood pieces and you wonder what kind of paint you should use on it, milk paint is fantastic. You don't need a primer or anything. Um, and what happens is the milk paint soaks into the wood like a stain and it's going to stay there for a very long time. Um, there are pieces of furniture with the original coat of milk paint on them that are over 200 years old. So it's very, very durable and long lasting. Um, so anyway, here's that first coat. Um, one other thing that's great about milk paint, we talked about it being friendly for sloppy painters, but um, another thing about it is if you do have any drips or anything, you can go back while it's wet and fix it. Just brush over it with your brush. And the nice thing about that is, um, you know, you can fix it as you're going. And also it won't pull off the paint like some modern paints do. If you try to fix a drip, um, you're really gonna mess up the paint even further. With milk paint, you can go back over it and fix it even as it's drying. Um, and the other thing is if there's a drip that you didn't catch, let's say um, you, know, you let the whole piece dry and then you realize there's a big drip down the back of the leg, you can very easily sand it off with some fine sandpaper and it's not gonna roll or peel off like a latex paint would or some other form of paint. So there you go. Here's the first coat of milk paint. And doesn't aviary look beautiful? It's such a gorgeous color. 
I can't wait to get this piece finished. And I don't even think it needs a second coat. So I think it's going to be onto distressing and finishing for this piece. You can find Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint at one of our retailers. We have locations around the world. And if there's not a retailer near you, you can find one who sells online at MissMustardSeedsMilkPaint.com or you can buy on Amazon, Etsy, or eBay.